Jazakum Allah khairan. Thank you, dear and beloved community. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always join us in righteousness and goodness and obedience to Allah. Say Ameen. And may we have many, many more Ramadans to come. Say Ameen. May Allah Azza wa Jal accept from all of us. Say Ameen. And I also would like to thank Fadis and Ashaz. May Allah bless both of them. MashaAllah, if you see, they both are amazing youngsters who have one thing in common. Among other things, they both have broken arms. MashaAllah. May Allah give them both shifa. Sam. They must have been arm wrestling or something. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our youth and guide our youth and bless our youth. I'd like to thank each and every one of you on my behalf and on behalf of Sheikh Mahmoud and all of our uh, Taraweeh Imams. May Allah bless them and bless you. That being said, nah, picture, tayyib, hadr. Give me two minutes and then we'll do a picture, inshallah. A'udhu billahi min ash shaytanir rajeem, bismillah, ar-Rahmanir rahim alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Allahumma jazi man ahsana ilayna anna khayr al-jaza. Say Ameen. Tonight I would like to give a brief introduction to hopefully my next, not Eid Khutbah, but Jumu'ah Khutbah, inshallah. My Eid Khutbah topic is different. But the topic that I've prepared for the past two months and I've been wanting to talk about, actually more than two months, but things that took place, the, the atrocities against our brothers and sisters in Gaza, made me not be able to talk about this topic because it became trivial in comparison to what's happening. But I think the time has come that I need to slowly yani, introduce this topic or reintroduce it because it's in our tradition, in our faith. But we Muslims need to be reawakened. Okay? We have become, yani, call it sleepy, call it yani, lazy, call it distracted, whatever it may be, and we need to be re-engaged um, with our deen. We need to be sobered up and to take yani, growth and partake in our faith slowly but continuously in all capacities possible. Okay? In all capacities possible. Not one aspect of the deen and leave the other, but slowly, slowly. And the topic that I really would like to talk about is the etiquette of a Muslim, not just in niceties, but in actuality. And specifically the etiquette of a Muslim in the masjid and pertaining to social gatherings. Okay, this is important because it's a very broad topic, but I would like to slowly bring it, to, bring it home to specifics. And I've mentioned before that the fiqh books, I know it's a word that's foreign to many folks who didn't study Islamic sciences, but fiqh means understanding and extracting. Deep understanding and extracting. And the deep understanding and, and, and extracting the lessons and application from the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah to apply it into our lives. And the first section of every fiqh book, basically, is fiqh al-tahara, cleanliness and purity. And this is not going to be a khatirah that's going to cover istinja and wudu right now. But what this is about is that we really need to, we really need to pay attention to what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, particularly in our attitude and etiquette in the masjid. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam said, and listen carefully, please. لَوْلَا أَنْ أَشُقَّ عَلَىٰ أُمَّتِي لَأَمَرْتُهُمْ بِالسِّوَاكِ عِنْدَ كُلِّ صَلَاةِ وَفِي رِوَايَةِ عِنْدَ كُلِّ وُضُوءِ Please, pay attention to this hadith. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if it weren't going to be difficult on my ummah, I would have commanded them, I would have commanded them to brush their teeth at every prayer. In another narration, at every wudu. I'm going to want you to stop and think with me. 
This means before we come to salah, our salah, as you know, shoulder to shoulder, we see each other, we greet each other, we talk to each other, we pray next to each other, we breathe next to each other. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knows that better than you and I. And Allah is the one that gave him the guidance. And Allah knows us better than we know ourselves. And therefore, he's giving us the guidance that would make us the best versions of ourselves. And Rasulullah sallallahu tells us here, if it weren't going to be extremely difficult upon my ummah, I would have made it mandatory upon them to brush their teeth at every prayer. What does that mean? It means when I come here, I should put on the nice attire, something that covers my aura and is proper and appropriate for the men and for the women. And then, not only cover the external, also our hygiene. Like I said, this is not about istinja and it's not about wudu right now. But if you understand and get my drift, it's about entire cleanliness and purity. Our oral hygiene is incredibly important. Please take this constructively, take this from heart to heart. This is from our deen. I just said Rasulullah sallallahu said. We want to apply the sunnah. Let's listen to the sunnah. Let's apply the sunnah. And the idea is, what's the purpose? That we would never, first of all, for ourselves to be clean, and that we would never offend another Muslim. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained, those who ate garlic and onion should not pray with us in our masjid. Why? There's nothing wrong with garlic itself. There's nothing wrong with onion itself. Why? Because they didn't have the means to get rid of that odor in time to come to pray. Then you would come and you would pray next to the person. Whether you say amin out loud or don't say amin out loud, every time you breathe and you exhale, guess what? The person next to you is being offended. They're being bothered. You're harming them. People are patiently not telling you you're bothering them, but you are. Smokers, with all my due respect, may Allah give you the strength to make tawbah. Say ameen. ameen. May Allah give you the strength to let go of this terrible habit. Say ameen. May Allah help all of us do better. If you're a smoker, when you pray next to a non-smoker, we can smell you. And your odor is offensive. And I mean this to, to you with all love and respect. We have to be cognizant of these things. It does, any offensive or odor is not acceptable. Any offensive odor, not acceptable. Our youngsters, all the youth, all the cool guys and gals, but especially the boys. Those shoes and the smelly socks have to change. We are in the USA. We have washing machines, you press the button, it washes. You don't even have to pour the tide anymore. You can just take the pot and throw it in. What else do you want? Your socks need to be clean and you need to smell good. Your shoes. When we were kids, if our sneakers smelled, we were taught by those that are teaching you like I am doing now. Take your shoes, get a nice bucket, put some warm water in it, put extra tide in there, mix it up. Yeah, I'm advertising for P&G right now unintentionally. I know a lot of our brothers work there <laughs> and sisters. Mix it up really good. Sneak, um, soak your shoes in there overnight. Take them out. Rinse them well. Put them on your porch in the sun. Nowadays, I know they have racks inside the fancy dryers and you can dry your, your shoes in there. Whatever works for you. You dry them, wear your shoes. You have fresh pair of sneakers and you can continue. Yeah, we have to learn these things. MashaAllah, most of us do a wonderful job. But it is important for us to understand that. And by the way, brushing alone is not enough. Ask any dentist. I know we don't listen to them oftentimes. I do, but some people don't. You have to floss. Flossing is important. There's stuff that's between the teeth that no toothbrush will get it out. That stuff over time, it causes a lot of nastiness. So, flossing. Brushing, using mouthwash. Yeah, you can get the non-alcohol stuff. You get the whatever healthy stuff you're into. But just 
the end of the day, what's the purpose at the end of the day? To have clean and non-offensive odor and have good hygiene, right? Whether you call that underarms, whether you call that feet, whether you call that mouth, whether you call that showering the whole body, whatever it is, at, we have to work on these things. This is our deen. Our deen. Do you know in the past when Muslims traveled outside the Muslim lands, they were identified. They were identifiable, by the way. Muslims were identifiable. Do you know how? They were the cleanest people anywhere they went. They were the cleanest people anywhere they went. No people washed their face and body five times a day. We did. No people brush their teeth five times a day. Not even in America today. We did. We should do. No people before they went to the masjid always smelled good, looked good. Ya bani Adam akhudu zinatakum inda kulli masjid. O offspring of Adam, take the best of your attire to every masjid. And not only every masjid, but every time you pray, even at home. So you can't be smelly at home. No offense. It's important. Brothers and sisters, these are important. We pray next to each other. We know what's going on. It is important for us to practice this very basic yet very important matter. So again, the etiquettes of the masjid. Also, I'm going to touch upon a couple of things and then I will conclude. MashaAllah, we're praying Aisha and you can hear baby wolverines in the back making all these mashallah hissing noises. And if you have a child that's being a child, you need to calm them down. Sit them down, carry them in salah, do whatever you need to do. Take them to babysitting. Your masjid is offering babysitting. MashaAllah, we have a beautiful program, we have a beautiful masjid, working tirelessly to help you. May Allah bless Sister Maria, who leaves every day she's missing salah so she can be managing the babysitting. But we have to be kind. This is etiquette. Why should someone, after working so many hours or being deprived of sleep and leaving everything and coming to the masjid to get an hour of yani, connection with the Quran and the salah, and basically they're distracted because your little baby wolverine is playing around in the corner? and be, <laughs> being himself or herself. You have to yani, be cognizant of these etiquettes. Another thing, I couldn't concentrate in Salatul Jumu'ah, for instance, yesterday, because the brother you know, next to me is making Salah upon the Prophet ﷺ loudly every other breath. Salah upon the Prophet ﷺ is most important. But this is not the time to do it loudly at every breath. I can't, I can't, I can't. The guy is giving the khutbah. I have to focus on the khutbah. We all should be focusing on the khutbah. This is important. I am being honest with you. We have to do that. Say salah upon the Prophet in your heart. Say it out loud when you're not, the khatib is not on the minbar. And if you're going to say it out loud when the khatib is on the member, maybe two, three times, you know, but every other breath and we're sitting can't focus, it's not okay. that's not how Rasulullah did his salah. That's not how the sahaba did it. Okay? So we have to learn how to, our etiquette. Our etiquette. Okay? And there's much more, inshallah, I will bring that in a khutbah, inshallah ta'ala, and perhaps repeat it through all three khutbahs, so that way the entire community is becoming more engaged and aware. It is important to be patient and kind. It is important to be patient and kind, especially with new Muslims. And new Muslims, by the way, don't have to be someone who just said their shahada. It could be someone that wasn't practicing and suddenly started to practice. Now they're just new to practicing. Be patient with them. Don't be someone who's harsh, who's negative, who's pushy. Be patient. Have wisdom. Think before you speak. Maybe someone sitting there, it's the first time coming to the masjid, first Ramadan fasting, first time wearing the hijab, first time... There's, you have to understand these things. Be patient. Be kind. Be loving. You know, whether it's a youth, 
You know, they're praying. Their t-shirt is a little bit short. They did rukua. Uh, These guys, yeah, patience, 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 patience. I told him, one brother took me aside after taraweeh. Imam, mashallah, like, yani, khalas, yawm al-qiyamah took place. Yeah, Imam, said, yes. Said, this guy is wearing a t-shirt when he did rukua at his back. I said, yeah, okay. Said, I told him to, to, to wear something to cover. I said, okay. He said, but then it showed again in the next prayer, in the next rak'ah, that is. I said, okay. He said, I told him again. He got mad. Okay, process this for a second. The guy is sitting in the masjid. Let's say he's in this area. He's probably, I don't know where he was. Let's say he's right here. He did ruku'a. His t-shirt, whatever they make these t-shirts today, la hawla la quwata illa, short. So the guy did his ruku'a, his back showed. The brother behind him, mashallah, he has to tell him. So he tells him. So the brother was not mad at that moment. He's probably embarrassed. So he says, thank you. Then he gets up to pray the next salah, two rak'ah. He does ruku'a again. Or should he not do ruku'a? And his, the brother sees the same back. So then he tells him in the next two rak'at, your back is showing. Well, I told the brother, brother didn't you, can't you process? Where do you, what do you think he's going to do? He's going to go fly and go disappear and get a t-shirt and put it on and come in front of you? He's stuck till the prayer is over. He can't go anywhere. You telling him again is going to make him upset. Because you're not processing. You don't get that. Where is he going to change? How is he going to get a longer t-shirt when he's in the third row of the masjid when it's full on tar during taraweeh? How? So you telling him again now is nothing but annoyance. A second time and a third time. <laughs> Do you understand? We have to be cognizant of what, what, how is this guy going to process? What is he going to do? Right? We have to be patient. Slowly. A another brother approached me. Brother, Imam, say yes. He said, you know when you give your khatirah? He said, yes. He goes, some of us have to go and use the bathroom. I said, okay. He goes, wallahi, 20 minutes, we waited. And the brother is playing video games on their phones in the toilet. <laughs> we have three toilet seats. We have so many people standing in line. Please tell the brothers. Alhamdulillah, the sisters didn't complain. So, little courtesy that yani cognizance okay being from the brushing to the bathing to the appearing to the attitude to speaking to thinking about other people and being in their shoes to kind of being patient people are not always yani mashallah like you think about you 20 years ago 10 years ago and then hopefully you can come from a, a better place a softer place a more understanding place. كَذَلِكَ كُنْتُمْ مِنْ قَبْلُ فَمَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمْ I hope we take this and inshallah we take everything that we've talked about up a notch. And we become identifiable anywhere we go for being the cleanest people, the kindest people, the most honest people, the people that smile the most, the most patient people, the wisest people, the people that are most understanding and supportive. We need to be that again. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us so. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our shortcomings, give us wisdom, patience, and guidance. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us love one another, support one another, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam abundantly on our behalf. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from all of us. And again, now I'm ready for the photo. Faris and Ashaz, may Allah bless you. And we'll stand in prayer after one minute, please. Izakum la khair.